Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we have just finished the wheat. It's May 21st, I think, or something like that today. So we're back up here at the yard. We were seeding a long ways away from the yard. And uh, we are switching into canola. Nice, bright, shiny blue seed. So this pail was our prime. So there's some canola. That white stuff is actually inoculant from our lentils. And we got some, I don't know how wheat got in there. And I don't know what all this other stuff is. But anyways, we're calibrating. So I thought I would just kind of show you guys how to calibrate stuff. I'm pretty sure I've done that in the past, but I haven't done yet done that yet this year. So uh, obviously our remote control puts our uh, conveyor out and in. Also turns our fan on. Right now we're in fill cal. So if you just wanted to load the cart, when the fan is on, because as soon as you hit your hydraulics on the tractor, your fan's gonna turn on, okay? And then you come back on here, out here, you unthread this puppy, you grab your remote, you turn your remote on, your fan will still be on, then hit fill one time, and it will actually just come across as fill, and then uh, you can move your conveyor around, and then you fill. And then when you want to calibrate, you just hit, hit the fill again, and it will go to fill cal. Uh, and now we're calibrating. So. I'll run you back to the tractor when I get there, but you actually have to set up the calibration from, from the X35 in the tractor prior to even coming out here. Then when you do, you need to prime your bucket. Basically, you gotta get your auger full, right? You gotta get your auger full, make sure she's all primed up, and now we're filling her pail because it goes off of weight. As you can clearly tell, her pail is about one third, just under half. When you're calibrating canola, mustard or inoculant anything that comes out that saddle tank pretty much because it's always like a between two pound seeding rate and seven pound seeding rate so it's very very small so which means it's a very small auger in there and these things take time to calibrate now all these other big tanks you got tank one here let me just show you this get some of this fertilizer stuff off here so here's our here let me zoom in on this all right here's our cart it's a 70 it's a 7000 series 1300 we also have 7,000 series 950s as well. But this is the 1300, it's the largest Borgo makes. I mean, tank one A, which is your first front tank, it's the big tank, it's 560 bushels. Or if you need to see those in liters, it's 19,735 liters. Or if you need to see it in cubic feet. <laughs> Anyways, I'm a bushel kind of guy. So uh, then the flex tank, the flex tank can either go into tank one or it can go into tank two. You choose, depending on what you want to be seeding and what rates you want to seed that. We actually have tank uh, B flex going into this one. And then we have tank two is, six, is 165 bushels. It's just seeding out FOSS on its own. Then we have this little 75 bushel tank three. It's also a, it's kind of like a flex. Uh, it, could, it could also go into this one or it could go into the back one. The difference of the actual flex tank, guys, is there's no meter on that flex tank. It's literally just built in, okay? The number three, which can go this way or it can go this way, actually has a meter on it, okay? That's the difference. The flex actually does not have a meter, but all these tanks can join into each other's, each other's tanks if you should so choose to do so. So that being said, we're gonna put down a little bit of FOSS uh, out our mid row, sorry about the wind. It is 30 degrees out here with the wind blowing. And then our tank four, which is at the back, traditionally it's used for seed. Um, it's also gonna get switched into nitrogen though for our canola purposes, okay? So that's, that's our tank setup. So this is the scale on our saddle tank. It's showing us 680 pounds in there. Oh, look at this dust blowing around. See these load cells? Now on the new 9000 series carts, they have this whole cart broke apart so that way you can't share tanks anymore and they have each tank, tank one, and all these other tanks on load cells. So there's pros and cons to that. Now our bucket is almost full. You want a, you want a pretty good bucket worth, right? The fuller the bucket, or the more full the bucket is, um, the more accurate your weight will be. So let's call that good. So tank five is green, it's metering out. One, two, three, four, my other four tanks are red, they're shut off. So I'm only calibrating five right now. 
You can calibrate all of the tanks together if you should so choose to. We only need to do uh, canola on five, which is our saddle tank, which is a 50 bushelder, by the way. And uh, we're gonna have to recalibrate four because it was seed and wheat and we're gonna put uh, mid row blend in there, okay? So let's just shut it off. Let's turn our scale on, let that thing warm up. It's gonna show you uh, 2.9, there it is. That's the weight of the bucket. Okay. Let's just grab this bad boy. On the scale. Thirty one. Thirty point. The wind is kind of thirty point eight. Good enough. All right. Thirty point eight. Don't forget that. We always run like a banshee back to the tractor because we always want to make as much time as possible. Okay. So then we're calibrating. So you pop this puppy over. Something to do with our brakes here, not to worry. So, the cart thinks that it did 33.5 and then we gotta put in the correction. Which I believe was 30.8. I hope. We're gonna do it twice anyway. And then you go page over. So it was out 8%. You save that or you're gonna do the process all over again. Bam! Now we're gonna still do the process all over again. There, here we go. You guys got questions like Mike? Why are you doing the process all over again? Surely if it was within 8%, by the time you saved that, maybe it got it down to 3%, maybe. But I wanna save it when it's like 1%. There's Lee, he's up on the bin, I could hear him yelling at me. What a crazy guy. Well, I guess we're both kind of crazy. That bin lid is taped solid to keep the rain out and the snow out. Because that nitrogen, which is mid-row blend, nitrogen and sulfur blended together uh, to a ratio which I want, um, has been sitting in there since like, oh gosh, beginning of December. So it's been in there for a long time. And surprisingly, it's coming up pretty dang good. But we do have a screen on there. See the screen on our nitrogen auger? Hold on. That's to catch any lumps. Any lumps or chunks, it will roll down out that spout out the back and right out the trailer. It will not fall on the trailer, it goes right on the ground. I don't want any chunks in there. Okay? Alright. Let's get calibrating. Okay, so we're just going to throw this in here. I don't care if there's a little bit of wheat in there. I don't care if there's some inoculant in there. That's no big deal to me. We're gonna have volunteer wheat coming out there anyway. It's gotta be sprayed. You gotta have another five kernels. All right, stick that under there. We're primed up, we're ready to go. Turn on your tank, because it always shuts it off. There you go, tank five's on, hit play. And we do this all over again. Make sure the not blowing out any kernels or seeds. And wait another 20 minutes as you get plastered by dust. Ah. Ah. We gotta get some gravel in this yard. Woo. Yeah, so it's a hot one up here today. It's 30 degrees with a pretty good wind blowing. You guys can hear that clearly. Probably can't hear me because of it. I apologize. Nothing I can do about it. So right now we're going to... What's he saying? What? Something about... What? Oh, sorry. Oh, I think we're supposed to run over there and set the auger off. Oh, man. Anyways... We're, uh, we're starting off with uh, Invigor, Liberty Link. We're starting off with some 357. And then we're actually gonna switch into 345. And then we're probably gonna finish off with a little bit of 340 in some different fields. All that was pre-planned. We have changed so many crops up here in Calibrate, you guys, this last like, we've grown barley. Hard red spring wheat, durum, which is also durum wheat used for pasta. We always just call it durum if you're wondering, it's just durum. We only grow red spring wheat or durum. It's just red. Barley, wheat, durum, flannels, mustard, canola, 
That's six crops. And of those six crops, the last crop is going to be three different varieties. So which means we're going to calibrate it two more times. Just because we hate ourselves. <laughs> No, there's reasons. There's a, there's a lot of different reasons why you got, I'm sure you guys got tons of questions why, what do all the numbers mean? And oh gosh, you are asking the wrong person. I have, I do not have a ton of canola experience. Uh, so I believe that the last two, I think the three is the generation. So the higher the number, the newer the gen since. So for example, the old 140P, which is like a gen one and then 40 these last two numbers I think is like the length of the growing season or something has something to do with that So the 57 is the longest growing season or one of the longer growing seasons and then three <coughs> Excuse me 345 still third gen you want the third gen third gen has uh, obviously this is pot chatter uh, but Some of these have uh, really good uh, disease packages So we're going with the 357 for I can't remember the reason why we're doing that I think it was maybe because we couldn't get enough 345 and I wasn't super happy with my 345 last year it's what I grew um, yes it yielded really good it was just a terrible terrible to straight cut I get that um, and swath both both but I wasn't happy with the pot shatter I I wasn't happy with the pot shatter on the 345 at all and so they tell me that if you go to the 340 it's supposed to have a little bit better pot integrity so I'm gonna go 340. You do lose some. Uh, you, it's gonna you're gonna lose a little bit of yield. So maybe it's six one way, half a dozen the other, because the 345 is supposed to be a little higher yielding. So maybe maybe it all works out. If you lose a little bit, you you know it's still higher yielding. Who knows? Who knows? But that's what we're doing. We're gonna try these three different varieties. And just so you know, the 340 is actually an older one. I'm pretty sure that's a bit of an older one. So that one's been around. The 345 is newer. Then there's a 343. There are so many stinking numbers. They lost me when they said three the first time, all right? I'm still sitting here at one and two trying to figure all this out. But there's actually books. If you were interested, you can go through every number, figure out what disease package, what lengths it has for uh, days to maturity, so on and so forth, all that fun stuff. We're not going to do that. We do not have time for that sort of thing. We're still calibrating. Will you hurry up already? Sorry. It's been a long, it's been a long little bit up here, but we just got to... We gotta get cracking. This is taking forever. Believe me, when we want to calibrate the nitrogen, it's gonna go way quicker. Way quicker. And we haven't even discussed that we have to change our depth. So we're seeding at five, and each number represents one quarter of an inch. So we're seeding an inch and a quarter for all of our cereals and lentils and so on and so forth. Providing that your uh, tips aren't worn down too much, you wear your tips down too much, that will probably bring you down a quarter of an inch. Makes sense, makes sense. But I'm really peeved out. This is the old school way, the, the newer uh, XTCs, they have a way newer uh, assembly. They don't have this squished together with these pins. The pins keep popping out. You know how many pins I've lost? They work themselves out. And then all of a sudden you'll go seed for a little while and we check these things all the stinking time because we know this happens. And bam, it's right at the top seeding 12 freaking inches. Not 12 inches, but you know what I mean. It's at the number 12, actually it goes to 13. And then obviously nothing's coming up through that especially if it be canola or it'd be way down here and hardly even in the ground so annoying so we're gonna have to probably have to spend the money to upgrade these to the newer ones with a pin style but we have to set that yet are we done yet well we're done we're gonna just say we're done and uh, turn that puppy off power our fancy dancy scale back up get this out of the way we'll have to dump that back in the tank when we're done Grab this one. Don't tip it over. Ugh. 20, a little less than last time. 29 point, 29 point two. 29 point two, good enough. And you run all the way back to the tractor as fast as you can because we got things to do. So it thought that I did 29.4. It's pretty dang close. We did 29.2. So then you put in the correction. And then over. Beauty. In fact, it's so close it won't even let me save. Ha! Did it all for nothing. 
freak out. Anyways, if you're if you're really close, they won't even let you save it. So now we gotta load. We're waiting for him for this nitrogen. We gotta load and we're gonna calibrate uh, tank four. And now we're loading. Hi Ashton. My wife. She's awesome. She's always helping out wherever she can. She misses seating. Her life has changed just a little bit because obviously our little one chapel. But she looks forward to being able to, hey. She's gonna be like, I should go down and talk that thing for her, but then she'd probably get mad at me. All right, we're loading in. What the heck is she doing here? We're, uh, on the white, we're feeding the birds. Trying to make the birds big and strong. Yeah. Filled up these nitrogen, boss, boss, nitrogen. This is the flat tank, it's gonna go into the big tank. I can't even stand on this one. What? <laughs> she said she can barely open that uh, button. Woo! Oh, you got this! Oh! Hey, hey! That's close. Now we move it over to this bad boy with our fancy dancy remote. We gotta clean this off. Don't want any mess. Oh, I gotta. I'm just going to wash it for a second. <laughs> She's got this. Anyways, I guess I better get loading here. Yep. So we have a screen under that conveyor. You can see it right there. So we're screening this stuff twice. It gets screened. Under that auger. And I like to give Lee a hard time because he always gives me a hard time all the time, but I'm not worried about a little bit of nitrogen spill over. I'm not worried about a little bit of nitrogen spill over. You want to fight that? Now you know I gotta give you a hard time because you give me a hard time all the time. Remember that bin's been in there since like before Christmas. And then it kind of gets these, turns yellow and gets moisture in it, condensation, the top of the bin drips down, bad deal. I don't think I'm going to store that long again. The only reason why I did is because it was cheaper then. No, that wasn't even true. It was more money. Oh, just insult to injury, but that is. But anyways, you guys got this figured out. We're going to load up this big boy hopper here. Flex goes into there. We're going to calibrate this guy. And we're going to go see him right here. But before we do all of that, We have to set the drill. We got to set down to number three, so we're gonna go. Uh, uh, we're gonna go what three is quarter, three quarters of an inch. What is Ashton doing out there? I have no idea what she's doing, but uh, I'm very intrigued. We planted two or no, two or four hundred trees last year. Voice crack. I'm going through puberty again. It's it's hard on me. Still? Anyways, yeah, still never really stop again. Anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. She's probably working on her garden and trees over there. And uh, Cody's still spraying, putting out his last load. Adios, amigos!